Uh, hi folks, so this is just a short video uh, that I'm throwing together to demonstrate uh, the software Sounderfit, which goes with the paper that I published yesterday at the Brazilian Symposium on Computer Music, uh, 2017, it's September 5th today. Um, so basically, uh, the idea of this project was to uh, see if I could use autoencoders to essentially capture a synthesizer. Um, so uh, the idea being that if I sort of take the output of a synthesizer and capture various periods um, uh, under different parametric conditions, um, I should be able to kind of treat that as a data set and model it in a latent space of an autoencoder. Um, and so additionally, I use some conditioning to try to capture, to try to assign some variables of the latent space to the parameters of the synthesizer themselves. Uh, that are that are known in advance, um, as well as leave some latent variables to kind of capture the rest of the variance. Um, so uh, I'll just demonstrate real quick. Um, I'll leave the paper to kind of explain the details. Um, but uh, basically, what you see here is a, just a little interface. You can run this on your computer. It's open source. Um, just a little PyQt environment. Um, and this is the original synthesizer I decided to use uh, as as an example. Uh, the Bode string synthesizer from the Synthesis Toolkit. Um, I wanted to use a physical model because it has kind of a complex temporal space with very few parameters. So here I'm just using uh, position and pressure of the bow. Uh, and so, of course, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's synthesizing a, a bowed string, but without a real kind of interactive interface. It's not a real violin, so it sounds like a very steady state tone. So just don't let that kind of distract you in the experience of uh, this. But basically, um, as I'm as I'm changing the parameters, you can hear changes in the sound. Um, so you can hear that it, it kind of enters a steady state period if I don't touch the knobs, but if I start moving the knobs, uh, there's a kind of dynamic transition period, and then it reaches the steady state again. So um, what I did was I essentially, uh, for all combinations of these parameters, I captured the steady state of that. Uh, that is, I, I chopped the two periods of the waveform. And, and put them in a database, and uh, basically treated that as a data set for the autoencoder to try to, to learn that through a, a latent parameter space. And I used some adversarial regulars, regularization to try to uh, make sure that the latent space was sort of uniformly spread um, over, over the available kind of parametric space that I wanted to assign to the knob. Um, so uh, this is the first result that I got. So now you're hearing uh, the synthesis generated by the neural network. Essentially, I just did the synthesis by generating waveforms and then kind of just doing a, an overlap add where you take half of the waveform and you kind of fade it out and fade in the next one. Um, so I got away with using um, very small networks of like, the periods are 200 samples and so I used um, a hidden layer of 100 nodes. Um, so very, very small amount of computation that the computer has no problem doing in real time. So basically this is a demonstration of a real time synthesizer driven by a neural network. And you can see that um, I capture a certain relationship in this pressure variable and another relationship in this position variable, which has some kind of consistency across the space, more or less. Um, and then some of it is kind of left into this latent variable. Um, but actually, one thing you'll notice here is that it doesn't capture this kind of dynamic transition space that you hear in the original synthesizer. I just switch back to that. Um, so that was missing in my data set. Uh, so I generated a new data set, uh, which included kind of random transitions, and I tried to capture the, the, the transition waveforms. Um, so you hear that it sort of represents it a little bit better. At least the, the, the sort of dynamic state space of the synthesizer is in there, is in the data set. But of course, you have to, you're only kind of finding it. Um, statically, and you have to reconstruct those kind of trajectories in the latent space. So I haven't gotten that far in the research yet, um, but that's probably sort of a next step uh, in this research. But the idea is that basically, given some kind of set of waveforms associated with parameters, I can I can learn them and then just kind of like copy copy the synthesizer, essentially like a photocopy of a, of, a, of a sound synthesizer. Um, that is, copy the, the relationships between the parameters and the data and make myself some new knobs. So, you know, this is based on a synthetic sound, um, which is a little bit lame because I already have the synthesizer, but it's just an example. Um, so, uh, in order to kind of 
I don't know, demonstrate that it's possible to do this. The whole point, of course, is that you can do this on sounds that you don't have a model for. Um, so I captured some periods of my voice as well, uh, doing different vowels, A, E, I, O, U, A, E, A, O, U, like that. Um, and just kind of made a very small database of like maybe um, 2,000 periods. And I just kind of assigned a number to it. So I don't really have the... I don't have parameters that really make sense, but I just assigned numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, two different vowels. And so you can kind of hear, there was a lot of noise in the microphone when I recorded this, so you hear some noise. But basically the position knob here is going through different vowels. Of course, it doesn't really sound like a voice anymore because I'm stretching it out uh, in the sense of gluing so many periods together that sounds nothing really like a voice anymore. But the point is that um, it captures the kind of vowel space in one knob, which I'm conditioning on, and then I had one latent variable. And then the latent variable ended up just capturing stuff that wasn't explained by the vowel number, and all that was really left over because I had my voice quite steady when I was recording this was some characteristics of the noise in the microphone, so actually the, the latent variable in that case captured some, some characteristics, some differences in different periods. Um, of, of, of how the noise was. So that's kind of interesting because it actually, you can hear that the timbre stays the same, but the characteristics of it change a little bit as I change the latent variable. So it really did capture kind of the majority of the variance in the conditioning variable and left kind of the rest, the little that was left to the latent space. So it sort of shows that um, it behaves kind of according to theory in the sense that you can, you can condition some variables on the parameters that you want and leave others, other amounts or spaces of the variance to the latent variables. Um, and so it's kind of neat because you can take any sound and just kind of assign it to a parameter space that's either defined a priori or just left to the synthesizer to figure out, and that's something that you can, you can basically configure. Um, so it allows some kind of room for designing synthesizers based on captured data. Um, so that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, hope to continue this uh, research because I find it interesting, uh, the idea that we can generate sounds using neural networks. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope, uh, hope that you enjoyed it. So thanks for your attention.